in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. He, Khidr, said, Did I not say that you could never bear with me patiently? He, Moses, said, If I question you on anything after this, then keep me company no more. You have received an excuse from me. So they both departed, until when they reached the people of a town, they asked its people for food, but they refused to make them guests. Then they found in it a wall about to fall, and he, Khidr, set it up. He, Moses, said, If you had wished, you could have taken a wage for it. He, Khidr, said, This is the separation between me and you. Now I will inform you of the interpretation of what you could not bear patiently. As for the ship, it belonged to some poor people working on the sea, and I intended to damage it, for there was after them a king who seized every safe ship by force. And as for the lad, his parents were believers, and we were afraid he would impose on them insolence and disbelief. So we did intend that their Lord should change him for them, for one better in purity and nearer in affection. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and beneath it there was a treasure belonging to them, and their father was a righteous man. So your Lord willed that they should attain their maturity and take out their treasure as a mercy from your Lord, and I did not do it of my own accord. This is the interpretation of what you could not bear patiently. And they ask you about Zulgarnain. Say, I will recite unto you a remembrance of him. Verily we did make him mighty in the earth, and we granted him the means of access to everything. So he followed a course. Until when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a muddy spring, and he found by it a people. We said, O Zulgarnain, either you chastise them, or you take a way of kindness among them. He said, As for him who is unjust, we will chastise him, then he shall be returned to his Lord, and he will chastise him with a grievous chastisement. But as for him who believes and does righteousness, for him shall be a goodly reward and we will assign easiness for him by our command. Then he followed another course. Until when he reached the rising place of the sun, he found it rising upon a people for whom we had appointed no shelter therefrom. So it was, and we encompassed in knowledge whatever was with him. Then he followed another course. Until when he reached between the two barriers of mountains, he found on the hither side of the two mountains a people scarcely able to understand a saying. They said, O Zulgarnain, verily Gog and Magog make mischief in the earth. So may we assign to you a tribute so that you set up a barrier between us and between them. He said, The power in which my Lord has established me is better than your tribute, so help me with strength of men. I will make a barrier between you and between them. Bring me pieces of iron. Until when he had leveled up the gap between the two cliffs, he said, Blow. Until when he had made it as fire, he said, Bring me molten copper to pour thereon. So they, Gog and Magog, were not able to scale it, nor could they make a hole in it. He said, This is mercy from my Lord. But when the promise of my Lord comes to pass, he will make it level with the ground, and the promise of my Lord is ever true. And on that day we shall leave some of them people surge against others, and the trumpet will be blown, then we shall gather them all together. And on that day we shall present hell to the disbelievers, exposed to their view those whose eyes were under a cover from my remembrance, and they could not bear to hear the truth. Do then those who disbelieve think that they can take my servants as guardians besides me? Verily we have prepared hell for the infidels to be entertained therein. Say, 
Shall we inform you of the greatest losers in their deeds? Those whose effort is lost in this world's life, while they think that they were working good deeds. They are those who disbelieved in the signs of their Lord and meeting Him in the hereafter, so their deeds became null, and on the day of resurrection we assign no weight for them. Thus, hell is their recompense for what they disbelieved and took my signs and my messengers in mockery. Verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds, there is for them gardens of paradise for their entertainment. Abiding therein forever, they desire no removal therefrom. Say, if the sea became ink for writing the words of my Lord, the sea would certainly be exhausted before the words of my Lord were exhausted, even though we brought the like of it to help. Say, I am only a mortal like you. It is revealed unto me that your God is only one God. Therefore, whoever hopes to meet his Lord in the hereafter, let him do righteousness, and make none sharer of the worship due unto his Lord. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. كاف ها يا عين صاد. This is a mention of the mercy of your Lord unto his servant Zechariah, when he called upon his Lord in secret. He said, My Lord, verily my bones are weakened, and my head is all aflame with hoariness. And my Lord, I have never been unblessed in prayer to you. And verily I fear my kindred after I am gone, and my wife is barren. So grant me from your presence a successor, a child, one that shall be my inheritor and the inheritor of the posterity of Jacob, and make him, my Lord, well-pleasing. His prayer was answered, O Zechariah, verily we give you good tidings of a son whose name is Yahya, John. We have given the same name to none before him. He said, My Lord, how shall there be for me a son, while my wife is barren, and I have reached infirm old age? He said, So it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me, for indeed I created you aforetime when you were nothing. He, Zechariah, said, My Lord, Appoint for me a sign. Your sign is that you shall not be able to speak to the people for three nights, though sound in health. Then he went out of the sanctuary unto his people, and made signs unto them that they should glorify Allah morning and evening. O Yahya, take hold of the book with might. And we gave him wisdom, apostleship, while yet a child and also compassion from us, and piety, and he was God-fearing, and kindness to his parents, and unto the people he was neither insolent nor disobedient, and peace on him the day he was born, and the day he dies, and the day he shall be raised alive. And mention in the book about Mary, when she withdrew from her family to an eastern place, so she took a veil to screen herself apart from them. Then we sent unto her our Spirit, Holy Spirit, that presented himself to her, a perfect man. She said, Verily I take refuge in the beneficent Allah from you, if you are God-fearing. He, the angel, said, Verily I am only a messenger of your Lord, that I bestow on you a pure son. She said, how shall there be for me a son, while no man has touched me? Neither have I been unchaste. He said, So it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me, and that we will make him a sign, a miracle unto the people, and a mercy from us, and it is a matter decreed. So she conceived him, Jesus, and withdrew with him to a distant place and the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, 
would I had died before this, and had been a thing forgotten. Then a voice called out unto her from beneath her, Grieve not, verily your Lord has made a stream to flow beneath you and shake the trunk of the palm tree towards yourself. It will drop on you fresh, ripe dates. So eat and drink and refresh your eye, and if you meet any mortal, say, Verily I have vowed a fast to the beneficent God, so never shall I speak today with any human being. Then she brought the child to her people, carrying him in her arms. They said, Verily you have done a very indecent thing. O sister of Aaron, your father was not a bad man, nor was your mother an unchaste woman. Then Mary pointed to him. They said, How shall we speak to one who is yet a child in the cradle? He miraculously said, Verily I am a servant of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a prophet and he has made me blessed wherever I may be, and he has enjoined on me prayer and almsgiving so long as I live. And he has made me kind to my mother, and he has not made me arrogant, unblessed. And peace be on me the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. This is Jesus, son of Mary, a statement of truth concerning which they doubt. It is not befitting to Allah that he should beget a son. Glory be to him. When he decrees a thing, he only says unto it, Be, and it is. And verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship only him. This is a straight path. Then the sects did differ among themselves. And woe to those who disbelieve because of presence on the great day. How well they will hear and see on the day they come to us, but the unjust even this day are in manifest straying. And warn them of the day of regret, when the matter shall have been decreed while they are now in negligence and they do not believe. Verily we inherit the earth and all that are upon it, and unto us they shall be returned. And mention Abraham in the book, verily he was a truthful man, a prophet. When he said to his father, O my father, why do you worship that which neither hears nor sees, nor does avail you anything? O my father, there has come unto me of knowledge which has not come unto you, so follow me, I will guide you on a right path. O my father, serve not Satan. Verily Satan is disobedient unto the beneficent Allah. O my father, I fear lest a chastisement afflicts you from the beneficent Allah, so that you become a friend to Satan. He said, Do you dislike my gods, O Abraham? If you do not desist, I will certainly stone you. Be gone from me for a long time. He said, Peace be upon you, I will ask my Lord to forgive you, for verily he is ever affectionate to me. And I will withdraw from you, and what you call on besides Allah, and I will call upon my Lord. Maybe I shall not remain unblessed in calling upon my Lord. So when he withdrew from them and what they worshipped besides Allah, we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob and each of them we made a prophet. And we bestowed of our mercy on them, and assigned unto them a high and true renown. And mention Moses in the book, for verily he was one purified, and he was an apostle, a prophet. And we called him from the right side of the Mount Sinai, and made him draw nigh unto us for a converse in secret and we granted unto him out of our mercy his brother Aaron, a prophet. And mention Ismail in the book, verily he was ever true to his promise, and he was an apostle, a prophet. And he used to enjoin on his family prayer and almsgiving, 
and he was well pleased in the sight of his Lord. And mention Idris in the book. Verily he was a truthful one, a prophet, and we raised him to a lofty station. Those were some of the prophets on whom Allah showed favor of the seed of Adam, and of those we carried in the ark with Noah, and of the seed of Abraham and Israel, and of those we guided and chose. When the revelations of the beneficent Allah were recited unto them, they fell down prostrating and weeping. Then there succeeded them a later generation, who ruined prayers and followed lusts. Soon then they shall meet perdition. Accept him who repents, and believes, and does a righteous deed. Then these shall enter paradise, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly in any way. Gardens of eternity that the beneficent Allah has promised to his servants in the unseen. Verily his promise shall come to pass. There they shall hear no idle talk, but only peace. Therein they shall have their sustenance every morning and evening. This is the garden, paradise, which we shall cause those of our servants to inherit, who are pious. And we angels do not descend but by the command of your Lord. To him belongs whatever is before us, and whatever is behind us, and whatever is between these two, and your Lord is not forgetful. The Lord of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is between them, so worship him alone, and be steadfast in his worship. Do you know anyone equal to him? And man says, When I am dead, shall I be raised up alive? Does not man remember that we created him before? when he was nothing? So by your Lord we shall surely muster them, and the Satans with them, then we shall cause them to be present round hell on their knees. Then shall we pick out from every group whichever of them was more intensely rebellious against the beneficent Allah. Again, we do know best those who deserve most to be burnt therein, and there is not one of you but shall come to it, hell. This is with your Lord a fixed decree. Then we shall rescue those who kept from evil, and leave the unjust therein on their knees. And when our clear revelations are recited unto them, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, Which of the two parties is better in station, and fairer in assembly? And how many a generation have we destroyed before them, who were better in equipment and outward in appearance? Say, whoever goes astray, the beneficent Allah will prolong his span of life until when they see what they were promised, whether it be the chastisement in this world or the hour of doom, then they will know who is worse in position and weaker in hosts and Allah increases in guidance those who are guided aright, and the everlasting good deeds are better with your Lord in reward, and better in return. Have you seen him who disbelieves in our revelations and says, I shall surely be given wealth and children abundantly? Has he got the knowledge of the unseen, or has taken from the beneficent Allah a promise? No, We will write down what he says, and we will prolong for him the chastisement. And we will inherit what he talks of, and he shall come unto us all alone. And they have taken gods besides Allah, that they might be for them a glory. No, soon they, gods, shall deny their worship, and become adversaries against them. Have you not seen how we sent the Satans unto the disbelievers? to incite them with an incitement. So make no haste against them, for we but count out to them a number of days. On the day we muster the pious unto the beneficent Allah, like the guest of honor, and we shall drive the sinners unto hell thirsty. They shall not own any intercession, save he who has taken a promise with the beneficent Allah. And they say, The beneficent Allah has taken unto himself a son. 
Indeed, you have put forth something hideous. At it, the skies are about to burst, and the earth to split asunder, and the mountains to fall down crashing. That they attributed a son to the beneficent Allah, when it is not worthy of the beneficent Allah that he should take to himself a son. There is none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the beneficent Allah as a servant. Certainly he has counted them, and he has numbered them exactly. And every one of them shall come to him on the day of resurrection all alone. Verily those who believe and do righteous deeds Soon the Beneficent Allah will appoint love for them. So we have made it, the Qur'an, easy in your tongue, that you may give glad tidings thereby to the pious ones, and warn thereby stubborn people. And how many a generation before have we destroyed? Do you find any one of them, or hear a sound of them? In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Ta-ha. We did not send down the Qur'an to you that you distress yourself, but only as an admonition to him who fears Allah. It has been sent down from him who created the earth and the high heavens. The beneficent Allah, who dominates on the Arsh, the throne of existence. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and whatever is between them, and whatever is beneath the ground. And if you utter aloud, or whisper, it is no matter, for verily he knows the secret of yours, and that which is yet more hidden. Allah, there is no God but he, to him belong the most beautiful names. And has the story of Moses reached you? When he saw a fire, then he said to his family, Wait a little, verily I perceive a fire, perhaps I can bring you a brand from it, or may find some guidance at the fire. Then when he came to the fire, he was called, O Moses, verily I am your Lord, therefore take off your shoes, verily you are in the holy valley of Tuar, and I myself have chosen you, therefore hearken unto what is revealed. Verily I, I alone, am Allah. There is no God save me. So worship only me, and establish prayer for my remembrance. Verily the hour of doom is coming, but I will to keep it hidden, so that every soul may be rewarded for its endeavor. Therefore do not let him who believes not in it and follows his own vain desires turn you away from it otherwise you will perish. And Allah said, What is that in your right hand, O Moses? He, Moses, said, It is my rod, I lean on it, and I beat down leaves with it for my sheep, and there are also other uses therein for me. Said he, Cast it down, O Moses. Then he cast it down, and behold, it was a serpent gliding. Said he, Take it, and fear not, we will restore it to its first state. And place your hand under your armpit, it will come forth white, shining, without harm, and this also is another sign, miracle, that we may show you of our greater signs. Go to Pharaoh, verily he has transgressed the bounds. Moses said, My Lord, expand me my breast, and make easy for me my task, and loose a knot from my tongue, that they may understand my saying, and appoint for me an assistant from my family, Aaron my brother, strengthen my back by him, and associate him with me in my affair, so that we glorify you much, and remember you abundantly. Verily you are ever seeing of us. Said he, You are granted your request, O Moses. And indeed we have conferred a favor on you another time. 
when we inspired in your mother what must be inspired. Saying that, cast him into a chest, then cast it into the sea, then the sea shall cast him upon the bank, there shall take him one who is an enemy to me, and an enemy to him, and I cast down upon you love from me, that every one may love you, in order that you might be brought up and trained in my sight. When your sister goes forth to say, Shall I direct you to one who will nurse him? So we returned you to your mother, that her eye be refreshed, and she should not grieve. And you did slay a man of pharaohic ones, but we delivered you from grief, and we tried you with various trials. Then you did tarry a number of years among the people of Midian. Then you came hither as ordained, O Moses. And I have prepared and chosen you for myself. Go, you and your brother, with my signs, miracles, and be not remiss in remembrance of me. Go, you both, unto Pharaoh. Verily he has transgressed the bounds. Yet speak gently to him. Perhaps he may get admonished, or fear Allah. They, Moses and Aaron, said, Our Lord, verily we fear that he may exceed against us, or that he may wax insolent. Said he, Fear not, verily I am with you both, hearing and seeing. So go you both unto him, and say, O Pharaoh, Verily we are messengers from your Lord. Send forth, therefore, the children of Israel with us, and do not chastise them. We have brought you a sign, a miracle from your Lord, and peace will be upon him who follows the guidance. Verily it has been revealed unto us that the chastisement will be upon him who rejects the divine signs and turns away. He, Pharaoh, said, who then is the Lord of you two, O Moses? He said, Our Lord is he who gave everything its creation, then guided it aright. Pharaoh said, What then is the state of the former generations? He said, The knowledge of them is with my Lord in a book. My Lord neither errs, nor does he forget. He who made the earth for you a cradle, and made for you therein paths, and sent down water from the sky. Then thereby we brought forth kinds of diverse pairs of plants. Eat for yourselves and pasture your cattle, verily in this there are signs for men of thought. From it, the earth, we created you, and into it will we return you, and from it will we bring you forth a second time. And indeed we showed him, Pharaoh, our signs, all of them, but he rejected and refused. Said he, Have you come to us to drive us out of our land with your magic, O Moses? Pharaoh continued, Then we too will surely bring you sorcery the like of it. Therefore appoint a tryst between us and you, which neither we nor you shall fail to keep, in a place alike for both. Moses said, Your tryst shall be the day of festival, and let the people gather together at the high noon. So Pharaoh turned his back and gathered his plan fully, then on the appointed tryst he came again. Moses said to them, Woe to you! Do not forge a lie against Allah, lest he destroy you with a chastisement, and indeed he who forges a lie fails. Then they disputed upon their affair among themselves, and kept the discourse secret. They said, These two are certainly two sorcerers who intend to drive you out from your land by their sorcery, and wipe out your superior way. Therefore gather your plan fully, then come in an orderly line, and whoever today is uppermost will be indeed successful. They, the sorcerers, said, O Moses, will you throw, or shall we be the first who throw? He, Moses, said, Nay, you throw yours. Then behold, 
Their ropes and their rods seemed to him by their sorcery as if they were sliding. Then Moses felt in himself a fear. Said we, Fear not, verily you are the uppermost. And throw down what is in your right hand, it will swallow up what they have made. Verily what they have made is but a plan of a sorcerer, and the sorcerer will not be successful wherever he goes. Then the sorcerers fell down in prostration, saying, We believed in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. Said Pharaoh, Did you believe in him before I should give you permission? Verily he is the chief of you who has taught you sorcery, so I will certainly cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides, and I will certainly crucify you upon the trunks of palm trees, and you shall certainly know which of us is more severe and more lasting in punishment. They said, Never will we prefer you, O Pharaoh, to the clear proofs, miracles that have come to us, and to him who created us. Decree then whatever you desire to decree, for you may decree only about the life of this world. Verily we have believed in our Lord that he may forgive us our faults, and the sorcery to which you did compel us. Allah is better and more lasting. Verily he who comes guilty to his Lord, then for him is hell, wherein he shall neither die to deliver nor live easily. And whoever comes to him a believer, and he has done righteous deeds, for such are the most sublime degrees. And gardens of eternity beneath which rivers flow, wherein shall they abide forever, and this is the reward of him who purifies himself from evil. And we indeed revealed unto Moses, saying, Take away my servants by night, and strike for them a dry path in the sea, with no fear of being overtaken by Pharaoh, nor you be afraid of being drowned. Then Pharaoh pursued them with his armies, so the bellows of the sea covered them, as they were covered completely drowned. And Pharaoh led his people astray, and he did not guide them aright. O children of Israel, we delivered you from your enemy, and we made a covenant with you on the right side of Tur, the Mount Sinai, and we sent down unto you manna and quails. Eat of the good things we have provided for your sustenance, but commit no excess therein, lest my wrath should descend on you, and on whomever my wrath does descend, he is lost indeed. And verily I am the most forgiving to him who repents and believes, and does righteous deed, and at last is guided. And Allah said, What caused you to hasten from your people, O Moses? Said Moses, They are upon my track, and I hastened unto you, my Lord, that you might be pleased. Said he, Verily we have tested your people in your absence, and the Samiri has led them astray. Then Moses returned to his people angry and sad, saying, O my people, did not your Lord promise you a fair promise, the descent of the Torah? Did then the time of my absence seem so long to you? Or did you desire that wrath should descend from your Lord on you, so that you failed in your tryst with me? They said, We did not fail in our tryst with you of our own accord but we were laden with burdens of ornaments of the people. Then we cast them in the fire, and thus did the Samari suggest. Then he, Samari, produced for them a mere body of a calf that lowed. So they said, This is your God and the God of Moses. But he forgot both the Lord and Moses' teachings. Do they not see then that it, the calf, returns to them no saying? and possesses neither harm nor profit for them? And yet Aaron had aforetime said to them, O my people, verily you are being tested therewith the calf, and verily your Lord is the beneficent Allah, therefore follow me and obey my order. They said, 
Never will we cease worshipping it until Moses returns unto us. Moses said, O Aaron, what hindered you when you saw them going astray? So that you did not follow me, did you then disobey my order? Said Aaron, O son of my mother, seize me neither by my beard nor by the hair of my head. Verily I feared lest you would say, You have caused division among the children of Israel, and you did not observe my word. Moses said, What then was your object, O Samari? He said, I perceived what they did not perceive, so I took a handful of dust from the messenger's track, then I threw it into the calf, thus myself prompted me. Moses said, Depart then, verily your share of punishment in this life will be that you will say, Touch me not, and surely there is a tryst for you in the hereafter, which never will fail, and now look at your God to whose worship you kept so long. We will certainly burn it, then we will certainly scatter the ashes of it broadcast in the sea. Verily your God is Allah, there is no God but He, and He embraces all things in His knowledge. O Apostle, thus do we relate to you some of the news of what has gone before, and indeed we have given to you from ourselves a reminder, the Qur'an, Whoever turns away from it, verily he will bear on the day of judgment a burden. They will abide in this burden of sin, and evil will the burden be for them on the day of judgment. On the day when the trumpet shall be blown, and we will muster the guilty, blear-eyed on that day. They shall consult among themselves in a low voice, saying, You did tarry but ten days. We know best what they will say when their best in conduct will say, You tarried but a day. And they ask you, O Apostle, about the mountains on that day. Say, My Lord will uproot them and scatter them as dust. Then he will leave them as a plain, smooth level, wherein you will see no crookedness, neither any curving. On that day, They will follow the caller in whom is no crookedness, and the voices shall be low before the grandeur of the beneficent Allah, so that you hear not but a faint murmur. On that day shall no intercession avail, save that of him to whom the beneficent Allah gives permission, and whose word he is pleased with. He knows what is before them and what is behind them, but they, people, do not comprehend him in their knowledge. And on that day all faces will be humbled before the ever-living, the self-subsistent Allah, and whoever bears inequity will indeed be disappointed. And whoever does good works, and he is a believer, on that day shall fear neither of injustice nor of any curtailment of his wage. And thus we sent it down as a perspicuous Qur'an and explained therein certain warnings that they may keep from evil or that it may serve unto them a reminder. So high exalted is Allah, the true sovereign, and do not make haste, O apostle, with the Qur'an before its revelation is completed unto you and say, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. And we had made a covenant with Adam before, but he forgot, and we found in him no constancy. And when we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam, they all prostrated, except Iblis, he refused. Then we said, O Adam, verily this is an enemy to you and to your wife, therefore let him not expel you both from the garden, so that you come to toil. For verily you will be neither hungry therein nor naked, and that you shall not be thirsty therein nor suffer the heat of the sun. Then Satan whispered evil suggestions to him, saying, O Adam, shall I guide you to the tree of eternity and to a kingdom that never decays? So they both ate of it, the forbidden tree.
Then their shameful parts became exposed to them, and they both took to stitching upon themselves leaves of the garden. And thus Adam disobeyed his Lord, and went astray. Then his Lord chose him, so he turned unto him mercifully, and guided him. Allah said, Get you down, both of you, all together from it, the garden, with enmity one to another. So if there comes to you a guidance from me, then be sure whoever follows my guidance will not lose his way nor fall into misery. And whoever turns away from my remembrance, verily for him is a life straightened, and on the day of resurrection we shall raise him blind. He will say, My Lord, why have you raised me blind, whereas indeed I was a seeing one in the world? Allah will say, Even so, our signs came to you, but you neglected them. In like manner, you are forgotten this day. And thus we recompense him who is prodigal and does not believe in the signs of his Lord, and certainly the chastisement of the hereafter is more grievous and more lasting. Does it not then guide such men to call to mind how many of the generations we did destroy before them, amid whose dwellings they today walk about? Verily there are signs in this for those endowed with understanding. And had there not been a decree that went forth before from your Lord and an appointed term, their punishment would necessarily have come. So be patient with what they say, and glorify your Lord by praising Him before the rising of the sun, and before its setting, and during some hours of the night also glorify Him, and during parts of the day, that you may be pleased. And do not stretch your eyes to that thing which we have given parties of them to enjoy. This is the splendor of the life of the world that we may try them in it, and the provision of your Lord is better and more lasting. And bid your family to pray and be constant therein. We do not ask you sustenance, but we give you sustenance, and the good end is for the people of righteousness. And they said, why does he not bring us a sign, a miracle, from his Lord? Has there not come to them a clear proof of what is in the former books? And had we destroyed them with a punishment before him, the messenger, they would certainly have said, Our Lord, why did you not send us a messenger so that we might have followed your signs before we were humiliated and disgraced? Say, Each one of us is awaiting, Therefore do await, then soon you will come to know who is the follower of the straight and even way, and who is guided. <laughs>